You may have heard the phrase attention economy. This is literally what social media is. If you can hold attention on your content, you will win. So how do you go about getting more attention on your content? You do it by differentiating yourself from the crowd and becoming unique. Not just pigeonholing yourself into becoming a niche creator, only talking about one thing over and over and over. I nearly yawn saying that. Now I'm about to go into this in detail, but by being unique, you stick in people's minds and you become someone that they relate to. People then will remember you more and they're more likely to come back to you over and over relentlessly. Think of your favorite creators out there on social media. They are all doing this without you even realizing it. So how do you actually make your content unique? By following the three-step formula in this video. Number one is to merge other interests with your message. As humans, we are obviously interested in more than just one thing. So talk about your other interests and relate them to the message that you want to put out there. For example, I made a video recently on not just relying when inspiration strikes. I feel like this is an issue for many creative people especially if we are trying to build businesses out of our creative talents. We normally get stuck in the trap of burning out or not being inspired or things like that. So it's about building structure around that. Anyway, I digress. In this video, I make the comparison of consistently making content to being the CR7 of your chosen sector and showing up consistently. Why, you ask? Because I love Cristiano Ronaldo and because I mentioned him in the video and related it to my message I got a ton of DMs like this one. You see me and this guy and all of the other guys who messaged me and girls <laughs> We're multi-relating here. We're interested in photography, videography, video editing and Cristiano Ronaldo. Therefore, we are bonding over multiple shared common interests, just like you do when you're building friendships out there in reality. So reality then. <laughs> Not the digital world. <laughs> Ronaldo has nothing to do with photography, but he's got everything to do with showing up consistently and being the best that he possibly can, putting in the most effort. And therefore the comparison works and you can see that. And therefore when I mention it, people who are also interested in photography and interested in football and Ronaldo, we relate. Happy days. <laughs> Think of Peter McKinnon, one of my all time favorites and actually the guy who got me into photography. He combines his interests around coffee, making leather goods, trucks. He's very charismatic and very funny on camera and he's kind of pirate-like. We relate to him as a human. We like his energy and we have common interests, photography and all the other things that he does which are funny and he's charismatic about it. Therefore, when we want to learn something new about photography or editing or something like that, we go to him. We don't go to Canon's page showing a weird tutorial that's like two minutes long and it's got the worst stock footage you've ever heard. Sorry, Canon. No hate to you guys. Hashtag Team Sony. Let's go. <laughs> but anyway, back to it. We go to Peter McKinnon, we watch his videos, and then we buy his products because it's him who's putting it forward. Compare this, let's say, to just a super niche account, which also posts about photography, but doesn't have any personality around it. Amazing content, the same standard of photography as Peter McKinnon. But if both of them were to bring out a beginner photography course or book tomorrow, then I am absolutely certain that Peter's would slam it and outsell and outperform the other one. Number two, lean into what makes you weird. When getting on camera or putting content out there for the first time, it is fucking nerve wracking. I get it. I understand. I've done it. But the sooner that you can let your weird and wonderful personality express itself whilst delivering a message that's valuable, the better. I am overly gestureful with my hands, as I'm sure that you've realized from watching this video already. If you didn't know me already and didn't watch my Instagram accounts, and if you are following those, then... They are down below, baby. Hoorah. <laughs> it's like an Italian, which I'm not, by the way. Or am I? People think I am. <laughs> I combine multiple languages in the same sense as if you watch my short form content, you will not get out of a video alive without hearing English, German, Spanish, French, and Italian all in one. And maybe even a bit of Swahili knocked in there. It's just the way that my head rolls. I don't know why it does it, but it does. It's how I write, it's how I think. It's weird, I know, but it's spicy. And do what makes you spicy. And sometimes I wear crazy clothes. I like wearing crazy clothes. Shout out to my petrol colored shell 
rave jacket. OG viewers know the one that I mean. <laughs> Look at Alex Olmosey, one of the biggest names in social media at the moment. He does most of his videos giving business advice while sitting there in a white tank top with a nose strip on and he's absolutely <laughs> jacked. When I first started watching his videos, I loved his message, but I couldn't remember the guy's name. So when talking about him to friends, I described him as the jacked hairy dude who wears a white tank top. His image stuck with me. It worked. There's a reason he's doing that. Number three, and very importantly, is self-develop relentlessly. It's a very simple one. The more you level up as a person, the more that you can help those who are just a few steps behind you get to where you are now. And that is the point of this. There are tons of books, audiobooks, podcasts, courses, YouTube channels, and newsletters out there, including my newsletter, the Creator's Manual. If you haven't subscribed to that already, it is jam-packed full of value, baby. Get yourselves on the link down below. Information is at our fingertips like never before, so dive into it like a freaking Olympian swimmer. Not a swimmer, a diver. That's what I meant. You can quite literally find anyone out there who you look up to. Look at what they did, how they got where they are now, then proceed to act like that and get a similar result. This is why right now I'm listening to so many actors' memoirs or autobiographies or things like that. I'm rubbish with like the names of book categories, fiction, non-fiction. I still forget which one's which. I just know one's made up and one is factual. And I know when I'm reading it. <laughs> Imagine that, I mean, she's reading Lord of the Rings and like, shit, this happened? Oh, alas. <laughs> Seriously though, if you want some good recommendations, DM me on Instagram saying you watch this video and you want some recommendations and we can chat on there. I read and listen to those books by actors and about spirituality and I do courses from successful content creators or YouTubers or copywriters because those are the things that I want to achieve. I'm trained to be an actor. I want to grow as a successful content creator and build up my business around it. That's what my goals are. So I must seek out the information how to do so by people who have done it. Same for you in whatever your chosen field is. Because if you don't advance your skills as a creative in your chosen field, then you won't have anything new to share or teach, thus resulting in stale content. And we don't want that. Immerse yourself in mastering your chosen field of interest. Research relentlessly and experiment frequently with different techniques and styles. Like I said in the video, more information in the newsletter, which is below the creator's manual. It's totally free to sign up to. Subscribe if you're not already. Comment below if you found this useful and what you're gonna be implemented, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.